It's sudden death semi-final time in the National Rugby League for season 2021. On Friday night, it's the Seagulls against the Roosters. Their seasons go on the line. That match is our focus here on the game plan today. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Anthony Seabold once again. Seabs, Tom Trebojevic, the most talked about player in the game, but he had a quiet night against Melbourne. What did you make of his performance? It was a really quiet performance. As you said, uh, Melbourne Storm did a fantastic job on Tom uh, Trebojevic. So they, they suffocated him out of the game. So his run metres and, and every statistic that you look at and expect Tom to be uh, one of the leading players on the field, and uh, he was very quiet. So um, unusually quiet. He's probably only had one or two other games uh, similar to that um, throughout this year. And, and you've got to give credit to, uh, to the Melbourne Storm right-hand side edge uh, defence in particular. All right, you just mentioned his numbers. Let's look at his numbers from Friday night's qualifying final compared to his season averages. All green on the left when it comes to his season averages, all red on the right. Let's look at the bottom three numbers. Tackle breaks well down, run metres well down. And one thing you've referenced all the time when we've spoken about Tom here on the game plan are his receipts. How many touches he has down by 15 on his season average. So how did Melbourne do it? How did they nullify the impacts of the game's most influential player? Well, there's a couple of things, Zach. First of all, as I said before, I thought the right-hand side edge defence for Melbourne Storm were outstanding. And we actually pinpointed going into the game, if Manly were to cause an upset, they were going to go looking down that edge because they had a lot of joy there the, the previous time they, they played um, against Melbourne a few weeks back. So one, you know, one player in particular who did a fantastic job was Jerome Hughes. You know, Jerome Hughes made sure he didn't engage on Kieran Foran. And you'll see there's uh, Tommy Trebojevic at the back of the shape there. But the player who did a really good job, uh, you know, last Friday night was Jerome Hughes. You can see him there not getting engaged from Foran. And um, what they do is actually get uh, man on man there. So, um, you know, Remus Smith and Jerome Hughes were able to do a good job. This time it's Tom at the back of shape again. Uh, Foran plays a little bit earlier, but again, that, that man, Jerome Hughes, with the support of Felice Cafusi, Zach, um, those two guys did a, a good job putting some uh, inside pressure and line speed uh, up against the uh, Man Manly Seagulls attack. And you can see here, uh, Jerome Hughes doesn't get caught up in the defensive line and makes a, a fantastic tackle. The other thing that stood out was the aggression, the intent. You'll see here, Felice Cafusi stepping into contact there, holding Tom Trebojevic up, and Remus Smith and George Jennings come in to uh, drag uh, Tommy Turbo across the, the line. So, like I said, they strangled Tom out of the game. This is another example. Tackle five close to the line. Great intent there by the Melbourne Storm defensive unit. They really did suffocate him, and that's one of the reasons. Where they handed over the football, um, the amount of bodies they had in and around Tom when he carried the footy, whether it's at the back of shape or one off the ruck. Tom Trebojevic is one of the most powerful ball runners in the game. The clips all year we showed of him just busting through the line. He's also one of the best kick returners in the game. How did Melbourne's kicking game help nullify his impact? Yeah, well, they handed it over to Tom and Manly in uncomfortable uh, positions. And this is the blueprint for the Roosters uh, this weekend if they're to, um, you know, to get over the top of Manly. You can see here... Melbourne Storm, uh, they, they were putting high kicks. And we call that, we call these types of kicks box kicks. So there, it's about uh, in the air for four or five seconds. And what that does, it allows the, the kick chase of the Melbourne Storm to uh, thicken up their line and, and get down the field and, and put uh, Tom Trebojevic under the pressure there. And the other thing I noticed was you can see Remus Smith, who came in over the top there in the number three jersey for the Storm, he was happy to give away six again. So they wanted to disrupt Tom Trebojevic. They knew what would happen. And you'll see as, you know, as, as Tom sort of, time and time again, come under that aerial raid, um, he was very uncomfortable. There he is again, taking his time to get underneath the football, but it allowed time for the Melbourne Storm uh, kick sprint line and kick chase line. So again, another really good example of, um, you know, there's the Melbourne Storm, that purple wall in, um, you know, Fanukan, Christian Welsh, Brandon Smith, etc., to get down there and put Tom Trebojevic under pressure. All right, so Jerome Hughes and Cameron Munster are the premiership winning halves for Melbourne last year. But when you look at the Roosters, and you just said it, this is the blueprint, their kicking game. Drew Hutchison, Lockie Lamb and Sam Walker. Three finals matches of experience between the three of them. So how do the Roosters make sure that they nail their kicking game to make sure Tom has limited impact like he did against Melbourne? 
Yeah, I think first of all, high completions. You know, Roosters need to make sure that they um, hand over the football to Manly, the right end of the field. And that end of the field is, you know, having Tom Trebojevic and, and the Manly team come off their own try line. So I went back and had a look at some examples over the last few games where Drew Hutchison has done a really good job with those box kicks. And what it does, again, it allows for the Roosters kick chase line to get down the field. So this is a couple of weeks back against the Raiders in the very last um, premiership game of the season there. But it allowed the, um, the left-hand side edge um, you know, kick sprint line to get down there and put the back three for the Raiders under pressure. Another example, Drew Hutchinson there. Um, through the middle comes the Roosters' chase. And what they did was they, they sat uh, Charles Nickel Cockstab um, on his backside there. And that's what they want to do to Tommy Trubovic. That's uncomfortable for the Raiders there. They're only five or six metres uh, from their own, own line. So, again, in the first weekend of the finals, Drew Hutchinson went to the same type of kick, put... Um, young Campbell in an uncomfortable position there. That's, you know, in that sort of 10 by 10 box, um, you know, close to his trial line and close to the sideline. So, again, I think that's the blueprint. I think they'll copy the Melbourne Storm there with regards to having a thick kick sprint line, getting down there and trying to, uh, I suppose, you know, um, you know, get into contact there with Tom Trevoy, which was some really intent and, and aggressive first contact. OK, so whether it be through their defensive effort in terms of their right edge defence or whether it be through their kicking game, the one thing I take out of this is you've got to take time and space away from Tom Trebojevic. Yes, yeah, certainly. No, I think that's what the right-hand side edge D uh, did for the Melbourne Storm. They had good inside pressure from the, uh, the middle forwards of the Melbourne Storm, which allowed Felice Cafusi and Jerome Hughes not to get caught up on their um, on the guys who they were defending. So they were able to, to check and release, and Jerome Hughes, as, as you saw, did a great job. That took time and space away from Tom Trebojevic. So, as I said, I keep using this word, they strangled Tommy out of the game, or they suffocated him out of the game. What about pressure, Seebs? I know he's played at origin level uh, for New South Wales, but did pressure, do you think, have anything to do with his performance given he was so talked about and he was going to be the difference if Manly would have caused an upset last week? I think Tom's played in enough big games to, uh, to be able to handle the pressure. You've seen what he's done on one of the biggest stages there with State of Origin. Over the last couple of years when he has played, New South Wales have generally won. So, no, I don't think the pressure got to him. I just thought that Melbourne Storm come up with a, a fantastic game plan to disrupt the Manly attack. And, and in particular, as I said, disrupt Tommy Trebojevic's impact on the game. All right, so Tom Trebojevic hasn't gone back-to-back -back games this year without a try and a try assist, so he's due this week. Do you think Turbo will return to form this weekend and lift Manly into their first prelim final since 2013? Oh, I think he's the person to do it. I think um, Tom Trebojevic, generally speaking, doesn't play um, you know, two games where he's quite in a row. As you said, his stats uh, back that up as well. So, look, I think he's the key person. Um, you know, we've identified him a number of times this year. When he's at the top of his game, Manly can beat any team in the competition. And a few weeks ago, I still, although the scoreline um, slipped away from them last weekend, I still think they'd take great confidence. A few weeks earlier against Melbourne, I think it was 28 to 20, and they made a number of line breaks, and Tom Trebojevic was in and around that space. So, look, I think, um, you know, he'll be a handful for the Roosters uh, this weekend. It's going to be a big challenge for the Roosters, but I think they can steal some of that blueprint from the Melbourne Storm. All right, so it's the Seagulls against the Roosters Friday night semi-final sudden death footy. Seeds, thanks for your analysis. Make sure you tune in for that match, the Roosters against the Seagulls, to see if Tom Trebojevic has another quiet night.